Hello everyone. I wanted to share with you some tips on how to figure out what your watering schedule, your soaking schedule with your water culture Phalaenopsis orchids should be. And also I wanted to go over my winter fertilizer schedule for my water culture fowls. So here we have my beautiful white fowl that is spiking. Um, the spike just continues to grow. It's grown quite a bit in the past few weeks. And I've had several of you ask me, how do I know what type of schedule I need to follow as far as my wet dry cycles are concerned with my water culture fowls? So let me just kind of go over some tips and some advice with you. Traditionally, full water culture means that you have your Phalaenopsis orchid in water most all of the time. And that didn't work for me. Um, I needed to give my Phalaenopsis orchids some wet and dry cycles so that they would grow. When the roots are allowed to dry out a little bit, they tend to grow better than when they're in the water all the time for me in my environment. Okay, and traditionally, semi-water culture means that you keep the water in the vase two days and then dry for two days. But what was happening with me was I would let them have those two days dry, um, pardon me, two days wet, and then like about after two days into that five day, you know, dry cycle, they would just get too dry. My roots would just start looking um, almost like they were emaciated. They just didn't look good. I didn't have the humidity um, to hold up that type of a schedule. So neither one of the schedules worked for me in my environment. And that kind of makes sense because I live in Tennessee where there are four distinct seasons. Our winters can go from zero degrees Fahrenheit and our summers can get up into the upper 90s in Fahrenheit. So my humidity is the same way. It's very low in the winter and then in the summertime, it's very high. So from season to season, I have to change that schedule um, according to the weather, according to the humidity too. So um, I go from humid summers where my orchids don't need so much water all the time to very dry winters that dry out my orchid roots really quickly. I also found out that if I don't fertilize really often that my orchids start losing leaves. Well, when they start losing leaves, they lose their ability to photosynthesize and then they decline. So that's just not what you want to see happen. So I had to come up with my own schedule here. So what I do is I watch my roots. When they look saturated after two or three days, I allow them to dry out a day or two. And when they start looking silvery again, then I fill up the vase with water again. So I don't want the roots to sit in fertilizer for too long because the pH of the fertilizer will change after a certain amount of time. So I like to change out the fertilizer completely after no more than three days. That's the amount of time I'm comfortable with them soaking in the fertilizer. So usually what I do, if it's humid outside, what I'll do is I will let them go two days wet and two days dry. And in drier weather, like in the winter, this time of the year, um, they soak for three days in their fertilizer. Then I drain that and I let them have one day dry. I also like to, um, these beautiful air roots that you see, I like to soak those um, really well in the sink for about 10, 15 minutes to give them a really good soak. I have found that when you do that, um, it improves the health of your plant. So as you see, the leaves on this one are very, very healthy. That is the main thing. You want to make sure that your leaves are healthy. And what happens if I don't fertilize, every time that I put water in the vase, what happens is this bottom leaf will start turning yellow. 
So it's doing much better since I've been soaking them in fertilizer every time that I water. The difference has just been astonishing. So let me give you my fertilizer recipe for my Phalaenopsis water culture orchids for this winter. Okay, here we go. First, you're gonna add your CalMag, about 15 to 20 drops. That's about 50 parts per million. And then you're gonna add your Epsoma garden lime, about an eighth of a teaspoon, or you can use Epsom salts, about 1 16th of a teaspoon. What you're wanting to do is you're wanting to um, add about 20 parts per million of Epsom salts or garden lime. That's your magnesium source, which is so important. Then you're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of your Better Grow Orchid Plus. That's about 200 parts per million. About 20 drops of seaweed extract. That's your potassium source at about 20 parts per million. And that's about 250 to 300 parts per million TDS. And that's what I mix up per gallon. Okay, and as you see, my outdoor temps this past week have been about 15 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. It was very cold and we had a lot of snow. And our inside temp is 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So my heating system cuts on pretty often. And so that's the reason why I'm soaking my water culture phalaenopsis more often, well, for longer, pardon me, <laughs> for longer than I usually do. That's the reason it needs that three days soak with a one day dry out time. And so I will be training this spike of this stake. I cannot wait until this one blooms. It's a beautiful little snowy white fowl. And I hope you all are just having a wonderful day and be highly favored, deeply loved, and greatly blessed. And we'll talk to you all next time.